money cross point families. It's been more than three months since most of us have been staying home. All students are taking online classes from home, and many people are working from home. And because the majority of the population of this country is staying home, many people are experiencing depression. And this is what Health Life said about mental health of Americans now. Americans are reporting significant and sustained increases in symptoms of depression and anxiety related to the COVID-19 pandemic, according to recent data from Healthline and YouGov's COVID-19 tracker. Women, minorities, people with pre-existing health conditions, and adults under 34 all reported higher rates of fear and anxiety. The number of people reporting these symptoms are well above historical norms. And WHO, which stands for World Health Organization, is giving tips regarding how to stay mentally healthy during the COVID-19. They said, go up, uh, get up, and go to bed at similar times every day. Keep up with personal hygiene. Eat healthy meals at regular times. Exercise regularly. Allocate time for working and time for resting. Make time for doing things you enjoy. Minimize news feeds. Try to reduce how much you watch, read, or listen to news that makes you feel anxious or distressed. Seek the latest information at specific time of the day, once or twice a day, if needed. Social contact is important. If your movements are restricted, keep in regular contact with people close to you by telephone and online channels. Alcohol and drug use. Limit the amount of alcohol you drink or don't drink alcohol at all. Don't start drinking alcohol if you have not drunk alcohol before. Avoid using alcohol and drugs as a way of dealing with fear, anxiety, boredom, and social isolation. Now, all these tips are very practical and important, but I believe what is most important and practical step we Christians must take to stay healthy in all aspects, including our mental health, is to spend time with our God in prayer and in His Word, who is the Creator and sustainer of this universe, who loves us so much, and who cares for us, who wants to hear and answer our prayers of sufferings and loneliness in these difficult days. I chose Psalm 142 to share with you this morning, because this particular psalm was written by David when he was being hunted by King Saul and his soldiers. And the heading clearly indicated that David wrote this in the cave. So let's read Psalm 142, verse 1 to 7. With my voice, I cry out to the Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before Him. I tell my trouble before Him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is none who takes, no, who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Amen. We who are staying at home cannot be compared to David, who had to stay hidden in the cave from King Saul to stay alive. David was scared anxious, lonely, hungry, thirsty, and desperate. Physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and relationally, David was exhausted. 
And David did nothing wrong, but he was being hunted by King Saul and his highly trained soldiers. In this desperate and lonely situation, David is crying out for help inside the cave. But pay attention to verse 1. How does this verse begin? It says, With my voice I cry out to the Lord. Now I find this phrase so comforting and encouraging because I'm a terrible singer. Whenever I sing songs, including the most popular and well-known praise songs, people still have no clue what I'm singing. People find my voice not attractive at all. And here in the cave, David is crying out to God with his voice. I'm pretty sure David's voice was not attractive and beautiful as he was crying out in tears. But it's so comforting to know that God wants to hear David's voice, the voice that is cried out of desperateness and loneliness, but crying out in faith. Desperate times produce desperate prayers. And David didn't just complain like an unsatisfied child who was throwing a tantrum. Verse 2 says this, I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. The word complaint in Hebrew has another meaning, and that is meditation. Like murmuring the Bible passages over and over again as in meditation. That means David was not just throwing a tantrum about the desperate situation, but he was going over the troubles with God asking for help, but at the same time, trusting and praising His name for being an awesome God. And this is how David finished the psalm. Psalm 142 verse 7, the last verse says this, Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Nothing has changed for David yet. He's still in the dark cave. There's no light yet. He is still lonely. And he has no idea when this thing will come to an end. But David proclaims at the end of verse 7, The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Through through, uh, Through eyes of faith, he saw the righteous people of Israel gathering around him and accepting and embracing him as their leader. And David did not just cry out into the air, but he cried out specifically to the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which is which means Yahweh, Jehovah, the only true God who hears our prayers. And the only true God who answers our prayers. As we we all are still going through this long tunnel of pandemic, we sometimes can feel hopeless. But let's trust our God and lift our prayers of desperateness and loneliness to our Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. Dr. Philip Eveson In his commentary book, he concluded Psalm 142 with the following words. He said, The Christ, David's descendant, was rescued from even stronger persecutors and from a greater confinement than was ever experienced by David. He was brought out from death and exalted to God's right hand and now is surrounded by spirits of righteous who die in the Lord. All the strong forces of evil and darkness that seek to persecute God's people cannot overcome those who belong to Jesus Christ. Those brought out from that death in trespasses and sin and made alive in Christ will also be raised bodily to live and reign with Christ in the glory of the new creation. And this is what Spurgeon said about David's prayer in the cave. He said, Caves make good closets for prayer. Their gloom 
and solitude are helpful to exercise of devotion. Had David prayed as much in his palace as he did in his cave, he might never have fallen into the act which brought such misery upon his later days. So for the challenge today, let's turn our difficult days into a great opportunity to become a prayer warrior. Let's pray to God with our voice. Pray as if you are speaking on the phone so you can hear yourself. Personally, this helped me tremendously to go deep with my God in prayer. And whatever we are going through right now, whatever situation we're thrown into, whatever obstacles we need to overcome, let's cry out to our Yahweh in faith. He certainly hears our voices and He will rescue us. Thank you.